All right, guys, so we're going to jump into surfacing for solid modelers. So the entire point of this webinar is to be an introduction and kind of demystifying some of the surface features. Uh, time and time again, as we talk to, to engineers and, and customers and contacts, the topic that comes up constantly is wanting to know more about surfacing. And so the goal of today is to introduce some of these basic concepts and to how to achieve more of what we consider hybrid modeling, right? This isn't going to be a true surface modeling, but it is going to be how to use surface tools to augment your current toolbox of solid features that you're probably comfortable with day in and day out inside of SolidWorks. The idea here being why surfacing? So surfacing allows you to start with some very simple shapes, right? This this head shape and then, you know, constructing a helmet and constructing something that is very complicated um, or would be very, very complicated to make using surface or solid geometry. And surfacing makes something like this football helmet possible, right? None of these things are flat, even faces that I'm going to click on and sketch on to create this geometry, right? I have to use a different set of tools. This is some of the pieces we're going to get into today. So as we go through this, I'm going to start introducing some commands, how those commands work. And then as we get a little further in into the presentation, we'll jump into SolidWorks and actually start using some of these to show you what this looks like um, and not just in a presentation sort of way. So the first thing I want to talk to you is probably a command that I think is highly underutilized, and that is delete face is again on the surfacing toolbar. And delete face has a lot more capability than I think a lot of people realize, especially when we're using imported geometry, right? So I have this, this design here and I'm gonna choose delete face. And I'm going to select, say for example, these inside faces of these screws, right? If I got this model from someone in a different CAD package, this might be just an imported body, right? And I need to remove these screw holes. Delete face is a great way to do that. I can choose delete these faces and patch and I will end up with a model without holes. I can delete, I can select all of these radius edges and choose to delete them. And I will end up with just a square that is the external faces. I can again select all of those external faces, including the ones I can't see right now from this angle. And I will end up with just this plate. So I can use delete face to really remove and patch a lot of things in a very automated way. Let me hop into SolidWorks and do one of those right now. So let's do, sorry, as I'm doing this, I wanna make sure you guys, there we go. Um, you recognize that same kind of scenario, right? I have an imported body and I wanna get rid of some of this, this information here, right? So under surfaces, I can choose delete face and I can select these faces. A trick is there's a lot of selection filters inside of SolidWorks. I'm going to just right click and, or not right click, left click, and it's going to bring up my selection filters. You can pick adjoining faces, um, coplanar, or both, right? Since these are lined up, all six of those faces get selected nicely. It's not always perfect, um, but it definitely helps if you know that toolbar is there and is going to pop up for you. And then we can get rid of that face and you'll see it patches it nicely on this complex inner surface. Same for if I wanted to remove this star, right? Same idea, I'm gonna delete face. In this case, I'm gonna right click and say select tangency since they're all tangent. And again, delete and patch, right? Very little effort to get rid of some pretty complicated pieces. And if I wanted to use surface features to do that, uh, sure I could, um, but it would be quite a bit more overhead than just using this simple command. So now let's talk about some other real world scenarios that this stuff might be really valuable. So I'm gonna talk about the idea of how to extend a surface. And in turn, I'm gonna talk about creating a surface from geometry. So we have this situation, right? I'm using maybe the whole wizard and I've selected a point and I need the whole cut and if the model slopes away, we end up with a scenario kind of like this, right? Where I can't, the, the tool has not removed all of the model material that I need gone. And so I'm gonna have to you know, manually remove that. So what we're gonna do is copy this surface using the offset surface command in a special configuration called copy surface. We're going to extend that surface, making essentially a cutting tool 
And then I'm going to use the tool called Cut with Surface to cut that out of the geometry. Another great use case of surfacing is as tooling, basically tooling in your model. So I can use it as a cutting surface or splitting. You know, I can affect change. If I jump back into SolidWorks, I'm going to go through that process with a different model. So let's grab the first one, which is that same scenario. And then I'll also grab the second one, which is, it's been a minute since I've pulled these up. There we go, extended countersink. Right, so I wanna start on the first one, which is this one, right? Same scenario, hole wizard, puts a hole in at an angle and it doesn't get all of this. In this scenario, I'm actually gonna use delete face. I'm just gonna select that back surface using select other and say, okay. You'll notice it corrected that issue, right, for me. Now, if I go to my next model, that model that we saw in the presentation, and I try and do that, I will have kind of a failure. And the failure is this surface is a little bit more complex. It also interacts and intersects other surfaces in the model. So it's not just I'm editing one surface, I'm editing multiple surfaces. Um, so that original workflow won't work as well in this scenario. What we're gonna have to do is copy the surface and create a cutting tool essentially. So I'm gonna use offset surface. It allows you to pick any face or you know, groups of faces and to offset that um, some amount, right? So we could go two millimeters and create a, a two millimeter offset from that, that face. If you set this to zero, however, you'll notice the tool changes to copy surface. So it's basically just gonna slap down a surface body where the face of our model was. I'm gonna say, okay. Now, if I press tab to hide my model, I can see my new surface body here. This is what I want to use to cut. So the tool we're gonna to use is to extend that surface. And we can choose these faces. I'm gonna grab a couple extra just to make sure we intersect the whole model, right? They don't need to go nearly that high, but it doesn't really matter. And I'm gonna go shift tab to bring my model back. And you'll see that this cutting tool kind of bisects that entire area I wanna remove. From this point, we can use cut with surface, pick our cutting utility, in this case, it's going to be this surface. And then that arrow is where we wanna remove. So I wanna remove the inside. And I'm gonna say, okay. And you'll see we removed that entire section of the model. Again, the this kind of workflow works great for this example. You could very much use, for example, if we're doing something in a model and we extrude a surface to cut through another model, we could very much extrude a surface through a model and then just use the cut with surface to slice the model along that surface. Um, this is a great example of how to use that, but this is very much not the only use case of this type of a workflow. So jumping back over, let's talk about knit. So knitting is the ability to do kind of what I did with offset surface. There's two ways to do it, or technically it became copy surface. So in this scenario, you'll see I have this as effectively a pyramid, and you'll notice that a sketch entity just appeared at the bottom of the circle. So basically I want that to come up through the top, and I wanna take whatever that bisects and move it up essentially. So you'll see what I mean here in a second. Instead of it being a cylinder, I want it to still maintain the original profile of the top of the cylinder. So, I'm gonna use the knit command to make a surface. And then what I can do is when I do that extrude, I can say offset from surface. So I'm gonna show you how to do this. And then I'm gonna show you how to do the offset, which I think a lot of people also find very valuable. So jumping back over, which one is it? This is going to be offset for multiple surfaces. There we go. And let's make that a view that's a little nicer to look at. Perfect. So um, from that scenario, I'm gonna just show this circle there so I match kind of what I was talking about on the other slide. I can use knit with surface to do similar to what I did with offset surface when I copied the surface. Basically, if I choose knit surface and I select faces on my model, 
I can knit those into a single surface. I'm going to cheat and select tangency to select all of these. When I try and select them by hand, I almost always miss one. I'm going to say OK. Now again, I have created a separate surface that is just all of those faces combined. When you do this, you'll notice a surface bodies folder appears, if you don't already have that shown, that lists those surface bodies. And again, that's that face, that group of faces that I've just knitted together into a surface body. So what I'm going to do is select my sketch, and I'm going to say extrude. Now what I can do is say offset from surface, and I can pick a surface. And in this case, flip the offset, Oop, reverse offset. And say, you know, 15. And construct that. That didn't quite work like I wanted it to. Um, let me go back and remove that real fast. Let's get rid of this real fast. So I can do kind of the same thing I did in the presentation. Now, what I find to be more valuable and a lot of people kind of ask about is the opposite situation, right? I have this big body and I want to shell it, but I don't want to shell the whole thing, right? So for example, if I choose shell and I pick this body and I say, yeah, I want it all to be three millimeters, right? That's great. I shelled the whole thing to three millimeters, but what if I don't want to shell the whole thing to three millimeters? What if I want to basically take this circle down and I want it to be three millimeters offset everything, right? So how do I drill this down but still leave three millimeters at the bottom? I can do that same thing here. So what I can do is take all of this and I can do my cut. And when I do my cut, I can say, again, instead of up to offset from surface, say three millimeters and pick that surface. Now what's going to happen is you'll see that that preview is it's going to cut away all the material up to that offset from surface. So what we've achieved is that same shell type of an operation but just in a limited scope. So I can leave the rest of this very thick but I can cut out the area of interest and shell out this part of the model to appropriately you know, achieve what I'm trying to, to facilitate here. Now the key takeaways from this is that when I want to make a surface body, let's get rid of the surface body itself, from existing geometry, I can choose to either use knit surface and then select the appropriate surfaces of interest, right? And this will create a new surface body that is just those surfaces. And then I can work with these surfaces independently. Or I can do the same thing by using offset surface and setting this to be copy surface. I can do a very similar workflow. Same thing, I have a new surface that is these faces. And I can work with all of these faces now entirely independently without having to worry about um, interacting with the model. So this allows me to modify individual faces separate from the model and then I could maybe potentially delete the original face on the model and replace it with the one I've modified. So replace face. Okay this is a simple one but uh, definitely a goodie for trying to do some of these very extreme shapes. So in this situation, I have a bowl, but the upper rim is flat. I don't want it to be flat. I need to add some contour to it for what I'm looking for. So from the side, basically what I want is I want the bowl to exist, and I want the bowl to come up to this surface. So I want it to follow this 3D surface, and that's what I want this, basically this edge of the bowl to follow. I hope that makes sense to everyone. And from there, so basically what I've started with is the solid geometry, and I've just inserted this surface. In this case, this would be something that I would consider a tooling surface, right? A surface to do work. What I'm going to use with this surface is 
what's called replace you know, it's replace face um and so what we'll do is we'll replace that lower face with this new surface and then of course we can get rid of the surface and we've created this kind of complex geometry this works also twofold right um, i used it in this case to achieve a very complicated uh, 3d shape but I could also use it on something like this, right? So I have this helix gear, and this helix gear is only about half as long as I need it to be, right? I could put a face out in space and say, actually replace face and replace the original face with my new surface. Again, this is say like a perfect, uh, a normally spiraled helix in a high-end CAD package, and we could use that to extend the geometry. So let's look at replace face. I think I have, yeah, this guy right here. And I should even have a surface already added here. Um, show. All right. So again, anytime we're trying to, we can look at some of these tools on, you know, say, our, uh, our surfacing toolbar. And I'll notice, oh, here it is, replace face. If you hover over these boxes, um, it will give you a little bit of a tool tip letting you know what we're doing. You know, target face to replace, and then face replacement faces. So in this case, I will select the original face for that, and I will select the replacement face. All right, and from there, we'll just say OK. And we'll achieve that replaced look right so now i've created a very complex contour for this um, edge of this part now it's kept the continuity or the and the areas that it's extended it's actually extended the surface itself um, maintaining um, the contour so um, other ways to achieve this and say like solid modeling would be pretty challenging right i would have to make this oversize the original part I would then have to create a cutting sketch and, and cut out solid geometry. Um, it's just a little bit more challenging and less elegant, um, a little clunkier, if you will. So replace face is a great tool for doing this type of replacement. And also that helix gear um, is something that um, most people wouldn't think of when I had to think about you know, extending that helix gear. Most people are gonna copy the model, you know, trying to rotate it so it's the right angle, you know, merge them together, cut the end off. It's a much more challenging endeavor as opposed to just replacing the end with a new face and letting the surfacing tools, you know, uh, rebuild that helix. So, intersect. Uh, this is one that I don't think gets talked about enough. Um, intersect is a great tool for a lot of things. Uh, basically, intersect is the ability for me to pick surfaces, solid bodies, and planes, and basically try and identify the regions between them that are in intersect, essentially intersecting. So in this case, I have a bottle, and I would like to know the internal volume of this complex volume. So I'm gonna do is start by adding a surface or a plane through where I want the upper edge of my fluid to be. And from there, I can use the intersect tool. Now intersect tool is gonna to identify the internal volume that is created by these two surfaces intersecting and allow me to create that internal body that represents the fluid in my bottle. And this is also parametric, right? I could change the height and I could change how much fluid's in it. So um, to walk you through that one, since the first time I'd seen this, I didn't think it was gonna be, I thought it was pretty cool, but you know, not something I would see that often. And a lot of times this is the one that people are most excited about. So I've learned to just, this is something we should probably talk about. So I've just created a plane. I did that by control dragging a base reference frame. If you wanna ever create a plane that's just copied off another plane, you can just press down control and then drag your surface up. Um, we'll say it goes up to eight inches, that's Right, so this is where we're gonna fill the bottle up to. Same idea, we're gonna use intersect. Now, if you look up there, I don't quite see it. So what we're gonna use is the search functionality here. So what I do is I can come in and I can choose commands. 
I've already chosen commands. It has a little command icon. And I can start typing tools. Now, once I find a tool, I can click on the creepy eyeball and it will find the tool for me on the command bar. I don't know where it's at. It'll tell me. Or if I'm going to use this a lot, I can click and drag and drop it onto you know my actual um, toolbar. So in this case, I'm going to pick my plane. I'm going to click, pick that uh, the body. And in this case, I'm going to create internal regions. And I'm going to say intersect. And it's identified this internal volume that is created by uh, this intersection. When I say OK, I can hide this. And if I had my bottle, we found this is the internal volume. Now, if I wanted to assign mass properties to this volume that represents my fluid, I could know how much this product weighs. If I want to just look at the mass properties in Evaluate, I could get my volume, right? So if I come in here, I can select, say, this body, and I can get its volume, right? This is a 40.424 cubic inch of fluid um, in my, you know, uh, different my bottle essentially. Sheet metal, and more importantly, imported sheet metal uh, for this case. So in this case, I have a part that was imported from potentially another CAD tool. Um, and more than likely, I would consider probably imported from like a lesser known CAD tool. Any CAD is the term I use for that. Um, not a not a main one like Inventor, Creo, Katia, you know, something that's lesser known. Maybe doesn't have full sheet metal parametric capabilities. Now, when I import it into SolidWorks, the first thing I want to try and do is convert it to sheet metal. And in this case, that's going to fail. And it's going to fail because these aren't perfect bends. Now, how do I get this into a real sheet metal part, though? Right, That's the big deal, is I need this to be sheet metal, and I suddenly can't interact with it. So what I'm going to do is start by copying the surfaces. These are in sheet metal. The important stuff is the flat stuff. right? So first thing, I want to copy these surfaces out. I'm going to extend them. So just extending these surfaces out over the ends. Then I'm going to use face fillets. We'll talk about face fillets to create the original radius. And then we'll talk about convert to sheet metal which is actually a surfacing tool, little known fact. So I'm going to come in here and create my sheet metal. Perfect. Now this is an imported body. And if I try to run convert to sheet metal, it will fail. And it'll fail because this isn't a perfect radius, right? It's close, um, but it's not perfect. And so what I need to do is create this same body, um, but I need to fix those arcs, essentially. So we're going to come over to Surfaces. I'm going to choose my Offset or Copy Surface. You'll notice that is probably one of the things I use most frequently. And I'm going to pick the bodies of interest. Say OK. And I now have four surface bodies. In this case, I've taken kind of everything that I find really important with the original. So I'm going to hide the original. And I have my four surface bodies in space. In this case, I'm going to start extending some surfaces. All right, so I'm going to pick this one. Pick. Oop, I don't want the whole surface. I just want the edges. I want this one. I missed one. Let's try that again. Let's try this one more time. I'm trying to get quick with the keyboard and it's not working. There we go. Cool. Click this edge. And I want it to go through the other part. I want to create that intersection. Say OK. Same thing over here. All I'm doing is creating those intersections. So what this is generally referred to is repairing the model using surfacing. If you've ever done mold making, this is very common. 
Um, so now what I've done is I've created those faces. Now I've done this before, so I know the radius this is supposed to be at. So what I'm going to do is actually just artificially put in the fillets. Now when people pick fillet, they always pick fillet, they pick edges, and we go to town. Now, this is only one of four different fillet types that exist in the software. And in the case we're dealing with right now, I'm going to actually choose face fillets. A face fillet allows me to pick two faces, define some radius, and it will fillet anything kind of between them. And you'll notice in this case, it's throwing the fillet on the wrong side. I can flip the arrows to adjust it. Ah, it's not quite 0.25, if I remember it's 0.2. There we go. It was grabbing the other part of it over here. So with that, I can say, OK. And I've created that fillet. Now I'm going to do the same thing to the other two sides. I'm going to pick the two faces. And in this example, it always places them on the wrong side. So I'm just going to correct that and say OK. So face fillet, which is the third option. Pick my new faces or my two faces, and then flip them around. All right, now we're on the right side. You'll notice as part of the fillet operation, it also trims the excess. That is part of the value in using face fillet for this example. I didn't have to trim the faces first. It will trim them as part of the operation. Lastly, I need this to be sheet metal again. How do I do that? So convert to sheet metal is actually a surfacing tool. This is probably one of my favorite tools um, in the, the set, is it allows us to do some pretty awesome functionality. All right, I'm going to say it's a tenth. Now, the first thing you're going to select is the base, and in case it's that, and I'm going to just pick the bend edges. In this case, I was expecting that, that little pop up. What it's saying is it can't change the radius of bends that are already made. Right? I'm selecting bends. Um, which is fine because there, uh, you'll notice that it updated this to the radius that I've selected. Now I hit OK. It will create my sheet metal part with all of its complexity and off angle bends. So now I can take what was a, a part that wasn't terribly useful, right? I can't flatten this sheet metal part. You know, it isn't truly a sheet metal part. And I've converted it converted it into a part that I can flatten, I can manufacture, and I can easily reproduce. Again, I'm showing you how to do just some really important stuff. This is an example, obviously. But for example, if I imported a model and say the fillet in just a normal model is bad, and I'm missing that face in say an imported step file, I could do the same type of operation. I could copy these surfaces out, I could make those surfaces, I could delete the original faces, and then I can technically use knit to knit a bunch of surfaces back together. Same type of idea. I want to use surfacing tools to augment my solid modeling practices, right? I want to extend my toolkit of different, you know, capabilities I have in the software. So we've created our flattenable sheet metal part. Now, this is an example of overmolding and using the thickening tools. So here is a generic controller. I'm sure you all recognize it. I want to take this and create, say, an overmolded rubber, rubber grip right here. So what I'm going to start with is just a spline. Uh, I've messed up the image. I should fix that. From there, I'm going to use a tool called Splitline. Splitline allows me to split faces of models based on maybe a projection of a sketch. Now I've created this surface, or this face, excuse me. This is a face. I'm going to use Copy Surface or Knit to create a surface from that face. From there, I'm going to use Thicken Cut which basically just perpendicular to a surface cuts away model. So thickening cut allows me to cut in and maintain that 90 degree all the way around. 
From there, I'm going to again copy that inside surface, and I'm going to do a thicken, which just creates model material. I'm going to uncheck merge, and then I will have two separate bodies, one representing my plastic part to be injection molded, and one representing my overmolding that I would need to, I could use for, say, uh, same as the, the, the bottle. I could use this to understand exactly how much rubber is going to go into this and what my addition is in the second process, that overmolding process. So let's jump in and talk about this one real quick because these are a bunch of different tools we haven't talked about so far. So I'm going to do... You really think I could have maybe named these a little better. One should just be named controller. They can cut. Okay, it's I, I did name them pretty well. Um, I'm just not reading them very well. So, perfect. So, I have my model, and I'm going to start by creating that line, essentially, that spline that I want to cut with. So, I'm just going to click on my right plane and start a sketch. Just go normal to that. And I'm going to pick a style spline. I'm going to say I want to go here, and there, 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 and there. Oop, I messed something up. So we will, actually, let's just start over. I misclicked somewhere. Let's try that one more time. So there, there. What is going on with... All right, we're gonna do normal spline. Let's just do this. Let's grab that. I'm unsure what I'm clicking on. Um, I'm aware SolidWorks. Let's try just normal spline and we'll worry about that one later. My inability to use splines is not the point of the presentation. So I now have a spline that represents my overmolding. I would like to use a style spline in reality because I can use that to make sure it's properly 90 degrees to the surface I'm leaving. Um, but this will still work just fine. So with that, I'm going to exit the sketch. And the tool I'm going to use is actually found in Features under Curves. And it is called Split Line. Again, allows me to use a sketch and some faces in this case, these two faces, and project that sketch and cut up those two faces. Well, in this respect. And now I have basically where I want my overmolding to lie. So I'm going to use that same workflow of I'm going to create, click on the faces, and inside surfaces, I'm going to use copy surface. Now I have this original surface, and I can use the thicken tools, and in this case, thicken cut. And this, if I remember right, is remarkably thin. And you will get a preview. And so this is saying thicken side one, thicken middle, or thicken side two, thicken cut essentially. So I'm gonna set it to side two, the previews inside the part, and cut up that body. And there we'll have our area to be over molded. I'm going to do the same workflow to create the overmolding itself. I'm going to copy those internal faces, select that face, or that surface, excuse me, that surface, and I'm going to thicken the surface. And in this case, we might want to go actually 0.1. Yep. And I'm going to uncheck merge. I want this to be multi body. Right, and now I've created that overmolding that I wanted on this model. So I have my pre-model kind of uh, injection molded part, and then I also have my overmolded portion. So I can create these uh, multi-body parts that represent overmolded operations very easily. So. 
let's hop right back. Last thing is split lines and hold lines. Um, I want to create something that we probably use every day or every other day, and that's Tupperware. And if you've ever looked at some of these containers, they're remarkably complicated. Hats off to whoever has to design this. So let's talk about making this Tupperware piece, because it's a little bit more involved than you'd think. Um, and we can do it very easily with surfacing. And I really want to focus on hold lines, because that's a, a fillet tool that I don't think hardly anyone knows about. So I'm just going to start my corner. This is a square, so everything is you know symmetrical. So why model four sides when I can, or four corners when I can model one corner and mirror it all at the end? So we'll start with one corner, and then we'll draft it. Nothing crazy there. Next, now this is hard to see. Um, this isn't the best image, but what this has done is, I'll just go to the next image, which will explain kind of what has happened. Um, there is a, a plane on the back at 45 degrees that has these. Um, splines, and all I've done is that split uh, surface, uh, that split face command to split up the faces of my drafted extruded part. Now this is the command that most people don't know about, and it is called hold line. So I will get into it and show you. What it does is allows the fillet to adjust the radius based on a at the end of the face. So what you say is You'll pick the, the faces involved, and then you'll choose where it should end the radius. And so you'll notice in here, we have a much tighter radius fillet than we do out at the, at the ends. It makes this model look quite a bit nicer. It creates that ergonomic shape. Now, I don't have constant radius fillets. My fillets radius is um, non-constant. Same thing we've done before. We're going to use knit or copy surface. I prefer copy surface, but in this case, I, I mentioned knit. And then we'll do thicken. We'll knit and thicken, knit and thicken more, right? We created those steps, nothing crazy. You'll notice this is still a solid model. We're just using some surfacing tools to create some additional features. Mirror the whole thing, shell it out, and then sweep a lip and you're done. So uh, we are running a little over, so I'm not gonna go through all of this with you, but I do want to mention that hold line real quick in the surface, uh, in the fillet command. So, all right, so I'm going to roll all the way back to here. Basically, here's that model. And there's that sketch that is so poorly done in that presentation. I need to work on that. And, uh, this is that fillet, right? So we get this very non-linear, you know, adjusting fillet. And that looks very nice, especially if we're doing consumer product design. This type of an operation looks very clean. So what we've done here is, first and foremost, we've split up these faces, right? So I have this, essentially this line, right? So the actual fillet in here if we come and open it up, is a face fillet as the fillet type. So what we're going to do is come up and create a fillet. Again, I'm going to choose a face fillet, and then I'm going to pick the items to fill it. And this is where most people stop using the fillet command. And these parameters are wildly valuable. Instead of a symmetric fillet, we can do asymmetric, cord width, and hold line. Hold line is just going to ask for what is that line, right? So we're going to pick that edge of that face. And you'll see it makes this very non-constant radius fillet for the corner of my part. And when I finish that, it makes a very appealing shape for, in this case, a piece of Tupperware. Um, you could use this, again, countless different areas. You can literally use just the um, split line command under curves to create the profile you want your, um, excuse me, your fillet to follow, and then your fillet will follow that non-constant uh, fillet. Um, again, I appreciate your time today and uh, joining us for this webinar, and I look forward to seeing you next time.